What's going on, guys? It's Jazzy, and today I'm here with legendary icon Flavor Flav. Hey, yo, check one, two. Check one, two. I don't care what nobody say, but I'm with everybody's favorite girl in Jazzy's world. Ha! <laughs> hey, what's up, Jazz? How you doing? Once again. I'm doing great once again. Good to and see how are you? you? Again. Hey, I'm doing all right. Hey, there's one thing that I want to say to you. Yep. From the bottom of my heart. And I mean every letter of each word that I'm about to say. I am very proud of you. Thank you. Keep doing like you do. Keep doing big things. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be huge. You're going to be large. Thank you so much, Mr. Flavor Flav. And it's great seeing you again, too. And I don't know if you noticed, but you like my clock? Yo, check this out. <laughs> When I see your clock, I said, hey, she's trying to take my job. <laughs> well, guess what? You can have it. You can take over. It's called changing of the guards. I. <laughs> That's pretty jazzy. That's Thank pretty you. jazzy. I love your clock. Thanks. It's actually my clock that I use for school, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Flavor Flav, your catchy phrases and amazing energy have become legendary in the entertainment business. So can you take us through the inspiration behind your iconic energy and how they've become an important part of your success? Well, let me say this, you know, energy is something that comes natural. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's one thing that I've always had, Jazzy, ever since I was a kid. I always was an energetic kid, you know what I'm saying, in the whole nine. And one thing about me, you know, I always wanted to be famous one day. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that, that I would get famous through rap music. But when I started, when I got into the rap music, I put all my energy into it. You know what I'm saying? And see, when my job in my group, Public Enemy, my job was to hype up the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Throw your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Everybody say, ho! You know what I'm yeah. saying? In the whole night. So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hype up the crowd and everything. It takes a lot of energy, Jazz, to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, I put all my energy to it until finally I became the best at it. And the only way that I came to, became the best at it is because I was having fun doing what I was doing. And the only way you're going to be the best at something is if you're having fun doing it. If it's not fun, then you're not gonna put your all in all into it, Jazz, and you're not gonna be the best. Right. So I put my all in all into it. I was having fun, and that's how I became the number one hype man. <laughs> so you sitting here talking to the number one hype man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, it's great to hear how much energy you actually had as a kid and the, the way that you also put your dedication and your love into rap music and not only into that, but also into your musical career itself. And I know that your energy has influenced a lot of success in your career too. And I find that so cool how many people, especially your fans, they love your energy. And I do too. And it seems like you have a lot of fun in anything and everything that you do. Thank you, Jazz. You're welcome. Thank you, Jazz. And you know what? I love your energy, too. And that's why your show is going to be crazy big. Because people love energy. And people gravitate towards energy. You know what I'm right. saying? So keep that energy that people gravitate towards. Thank you, and I definitely will. So You better. And if you don't, <laughs> I'm calling the cops. All right, I got you, Mr. Flavor right. Flav. <laughs> <laughs> so my older sister is a huge fan of the series Flavor of Love. And she's 17, so that means that your show is still lit. So what did that show mean to your post-music career, and how do you feel that show set the standard for reality television? The show set the boundaries for a lot of reality TV shows. My TV show, Flavor of Love, even though it was like a TV show called The Bachelor, you know what I'm saying? I never watched the show, but my producers asked me, hey, have you ever seen The Bachelor? I said, no. They said, good, Flav, we're going to put you in a house with 25 girls, and you just got to narrow it down to one. So I said, okay, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> so anyway, they put the 25 girls in the, in the house with me, right, Jazz? And next thing you know, I narrowed it all the way down to one. When I did that first season, 
that season was a real hit season, and it was number one on VH1. There's a TV station called VH1, right? It was number one on VH1. So then I did another season. It was called Flavor of Love 2. And when I did that season, Jazz, that show was number one, once again, on VH1. But also that was my biggest season ever. I brought VH1, its most viewers ever in its history, 7.5 million viewers. And no one has ever broken that record to this date yet. You know what I'm saying? So then I did another one, Flavor of Love 3. And that show was number one. So when I left VH1, I left that number one. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that was watching my show really loved it. They really got into it. Then there were other reality TV shows that tried to mock my show and everything. You know what I'm saying? But um, the way that I did my TV show set the standards for other people to do their shows the right way. Like that. Wow, I love that so much. And honestly speaking here, it's really cool how... Your show, how you had your own show, and it's still relevant today. And your show came out in 2006, which was the same year that my sister was born. So that means that even though it's been 17 years later since you first made your show, it's still popular now. And people yeah. still watch the reruns that are posted in different channels and everything. Yeah, and so that's that, so cool. And you know what, Jazz? Check this out, Jazzy. People come up to me today. And they treat me as if I made the show last week. <laughs> That's how hot that show was, you know? And not only that, but that show is so hot right now. All of my reruns is beating out a lot of these new shows today. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. Right, and you're yo, still able on. to benefit. Hold on one second. Hey, yo, can we stop for a second? A few moments later. Okay. I'm sorry, Jazz. Hey, guess what? What? <laughs> me and you. We got good news for these people out there. You know what the good news is? What is it? We're back. Exactly, we're <laughs> back. <laughs> That's right, Flavor Flav right here with my girl Jazzy. <laughs> yep, guys, we're here back. Um, Mr. Flavor Flav, he, we just had to make sure that he got comfortable and get just right. And also, I'm loving the Taylor Swift shirt right there. <laughs> uh, no doubt, no doubt, man. That's my girl, man. I'm a big, big fan of hers, man. You know what I'm saying? V very big fan. Not only that, but you know what? I done gained a name from all of her Swifties. You know really? what they call me? What do they call you? King Swiftie. <laughs> they call me King of the Swifties. You like Taylor Swift? I like Taylor Swift, yeah. I used to listen to her music all the time. You do? Do you still listen to it? I still kind of listen to her music here and there. All right, well, can I share something with you then? Yes. Watch this. This is for you. Really? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so and, much. Hey, and guess what? What? <laughs> I got something else for you, too. Bam. You see that? Oh, shoot. No way. Pick. Put a Look, on it. It's That's a Taylor right. Swift guitar pick, guys. That is it so cool. Is. Thank you so much, Mr. Flavor Flav. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yep, I'm a big fan of hers. Big, big, big fan. I'm going to keep this music. forever. Thank you. Love her lyrics and everything. All right, now, meanwhile, back on the ranch, where was we at? Let's go. So we were, uh, so next question is. Yo, this is gonna be one of the most funnest interviews you ever did. I'm telling seriously. you, watch. Watch. I'm telling you. <laughs> ain't gonna be no other interviews better than Flavor Flav. Watch this with Jazz. I'm telling y'all, G. Come on, Jazz. Exactly. Rock the house, Jazz. So, and all <laughs> that Jazz. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for that introduction. Come on, Jazz. Come on, Jazz. Let's rock. Let's so, rock. So, speaking about your show, uh, Flavor of Love, my sister would also like to know. Red Lobster is still one of your favorite restaurants to go to, like you said on the show. <laughs> it was a hilarious question, yep. too. But yep. honestly, we all got to know. We yep. want to know. I love Red Lobster. I really, really love Red Lobster, man. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, but I'm going to tell you, because that was crazy when I had to um, date one of the girls. You know what I'm saying? We got all fly like we was going, going to a banquet. You know what I'm saying? We pull up the Red Lobster. You know what I'm saying? And, and guess what? I'm going to tell you something else that's funny, right? Another funny date that I went on with one of the girls, right? We got dressed jazz I, like we was going to the ball. You know what I'm saying? In the whole night. And we pulled up to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, my took, gosh! It was crazy, but they but but we shut the whole Kentucky Fried Chicken down and everything. They let me date the girl in there and all of that. It was a fun episode. Well, that does seem pretty fun there, and uh, yeah. honestly, Red Lobster is not a bad restaurant. I really do like Red Lobster. It's just funny that you got all dressed up and everything. Yeah, that's really hilarious. And my sister showed me a clip of it, so it was pretty fun to see. You gotta tell your sister I said what up. Hey, shout out to Janara. Shout out to Janara. <laughs> so last time I saw you, you were with Ice-T, and I heard that there's a very interesting story about you two going to Red Lobster. Can you tell us that story? <laughs> wow, you just came into the world, and already you are that girl. <laughs> wow. All right, which was the main camera, that one? Yep, that one. Oh, okay, because I'm up here looking into that one. <laughs> Man, come on, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I don't know where Jazzy get this information, but this girl is amazing. Did y'all hear what she just asked me? She just asked me to tell her about the episode with me and Ice T and us going to Red Lobster. Wow. Can I tell you something? That was way back in like 1987, 88, right? I, you right. wasn't nowhere around these parts of no. America around them time, right? So um, we were all going to Red Lobster, right? To have, you know, to have lunch and everything. You know what I'm saying? Ice-T was with, was with me, my DJ Terminator X and his wife, Andrea, was in the car with me, right? So Ice-T had a Ferrari. So we're following it back of Ice-T and everything. The next thing you know, we going into the parking garage. So every all of the cars had stopped, and I'm in back of Ice T, right? So next thing you know, Terminator X is sitting in the back seat. I turned around to talk to Terminator X, and I thought that Ice T pulled up, and I hit the gas pedal. And when I hit the gas pedal, boom! I hit the back of Ice T's Ferrari. Oh I'm like, my gosh. oh snap! I hit Ice T's Ferrari. Yo, I'm like, oh man, this guy is gonna kill me. He's gonna <laughs> kill me, right? Yo, he got out the car. He got out the car, looked at the little damage. I broke his light on his Ferrari. Oy. Looked at the damage. He brushed it off and said, I don't even worry about it. Come on, let's go. And he took us all the lunch and paid for it. And to this day, right now, I still have a piece of that light that broke from his car. Really? Yeah, but me and Ice-T always been good friends too, man, you know. You know, he's always been a good person, man. And not only that, but he's a very smart and witty brother. You know what I'm saying, in the whole nine. And you can learn a lot from Ice, because you know, Ice been through a lot, you know what I'm saying? Just like a lot of people my age been through a lot. But that man really, really has a lot of knowledge and wisdom to spread to the world. Mr. Ice-T is a great man, and yep. I really did enjoy the interview that we did with him as well. And that's actually a pretty funny story, too. And it's really cool that you still have the artifact from that damage. I do. I really so, do, Jazz. Yeah, I find that really interesting, too. Talk to me about singing the national anthem at the Bucks game. Wow. And um, I actually had the chance to see it online, and I was pleasantly surprised. All the land of the free. There were moments where I was just like, wow, Mr. Flavor Flav can actually sing. And then there were other moments where I was like, wow, Flavor Flav is, uh, he's singing the national anthem. So uh, how did that invite happen and how was that experience for you? I'm oh, sorry, G, but this girl is cracking me up. I love her, man. You can't help but love this girl. You know what I'm saying? Word up. All right, so Thank check you. this out. I got a nephew. You know what I'm saying? His name is Marjan Bochamp. He's number three on the Milwaukee Bucks. You know what I'm saying? And one day, they came out to Vegas to play in the summer league in the whole nine. So uh, I got to meet the president and the vice president of the Bucks. So I said to the president, I said, yo, man, one day I want to come out there and I want to sing the national anthem. He was like... Well, send me a video of you singing it. Luckily, Jazz, I had a video of me singing it in my phone. I sent it to him, and then a couple of days later, he sends me a message back saying, Flav, we love it. You did great. You're clear. Next thing you know, I um, went out there. I ain't going to lie, Jazz. It was a very... This is the only time in life where I ever got nervous. For just one split second, right? 
because when they put that mic in my hand, the place got silent. And I had to make sure that I was in key, in tune, right? So I stuttered with the first note. And I said, oh, oh, say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, you feel me? That's the <laughs> only time jazz in life I ever got nervous. But I just want to thank, first of all, I want to thank the Milwaukee Bucks, you know what I'm saying, for giving me that opportunity. You know what I'm saying and everything. Everybody that sings the national anthem, they put their own twist to it and all of that, right? So I said, you know what? Now, I can't sing for real jazz, yes. but I said, I got to make this sound like Flavor Flav is singing the national anthem. You know what I'm saying? So I put my own twist to it. And I know I took my time and took a long time getting through the song. As a matter of fact, I took so much time to where I bet you any amount of money, the way that I sang that national anthem, the whole United States knows it word for word now. Because <laughs> I took my time and I sang it slow, but I sang it correct. But it was a real good, fun moment and everything, you know what I'm saying? And I felt that, you know, I wanted to make some history by me doing it. And plus, it was on my bucket list. It's something that I always wanted to do, Jazz, because I had, you know, a lot of uncles and aunts that went to Vietnam, and they fought in, in the war. And, they, and some of them died. They didn't come back home alive. But they died fighting for this country. So they died fighting for, for something that they believed in. So when I went and sang that national anthem, that's who I was singing it for. I was singing it, you know, for them. Because they're not here to do it, so I did it for them. Well, that's actually very special that you were able to sing that from the heart, too. Yeah. And I find that really cool how you had that opportunity to sing the national anthem for the Milwaukee Bucks. And honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought of that. I mean, that's something that I wouldn't have imagined, like Flavor Flav singing the national anthem <laughs> for the Bucks. Yeah. It's very interesting, but I definitely enjoyed it. I can see that the fans enjoyed it, and you definitely enjoyed it, too. Yeah, I did. Now, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Can I do a good job? You did an amazing job. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I love this girl. She's going to be huge. Word up, G. You're on the strength. You are Jennifer Hudson, we got somebody getting ready to come to join you. Cameron <laughs> Hall, we got somebody getting ready to come to join you. This girl ain't no joke, yo. Thank you, Mr. Flavor Flav. You're welcome. So, I actually have a Yom TV raps card from the 90s of you. So, what can you tell me about those times? And what were some of your favorite memories from the 90s? Can you please show this to everyone out there? Wow. Look at this, G. A, a, a vintage, a vintage public enemy Yo MTV raps card. Wow. Hey, you know what? Before you leave, you know what's going to really make it more vintage and more valuable? What? Me signing it for you. I would love for you to sign <laughs> it. I got you, baby, sis. Don't even Thanks. worry about it. Yo, this is dope. Where did you get that from? Well, actually, um, when we went to go interview Nardwar, uh -huh. inside of the record shop, they, all, uh, they had these... Packets of they had the packs of the Yo MTV rap cards. Right, right. So right. I was just like, oh, these are so cool. And I showed it to my dad. He was just like, oh my gosh, they have Yo MTV rap cards. Get them, get, get all of them. So we got a whole bunch of packs. And once we got home, we opened all of them. And then we, we, uh, we got one of these inside. And we we're just like, oh, one day we're gonna interview uh, Mr. Flavor Flav, and we're gonna show this to him and ask him a question about it. Wow. Look at us now. We definitely manifested that. Yeah, wow. I remember that. I, and you know what? I can. I remember take, actually taking that picture, too. You do? Yep, I remember taking that picture. But Yo! MTV Raps was, was a very big, huge program for the rap music world, you know, back in the days, jazz. You know, a lot of people didn't think that rap music would last and everything, you know what I'm saying? But when it became real, real, real popular jazz, then we made a show out of it. And this show really helped launch a lot of rappers over the bar, you know? And it, and it helped rap music stay alive, you know what I'm saying? And it helped rap music be what it is today, like that. Wow, well, Yom TV Raps definitely contributed a lot to uh, hip-hop and to the growth of hip-hop, too. Yes. And that's really nice to hear. 
Yes, definitely. Blur it out. So you and Public Enemy member Chuck D have been able to create a new record which has used AI technology to translate the song into 27 different languages. So do you feel like this could be a new trend in using AI technology to make positive impacts in the music industry? Well, Jazz, I ain't gonna lie, but I really, really hope that you know, this makes a very, very positive impact. And the reason why I say that is because AI has been misused by a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. And I feel that I'm one of the first ones to show how AI can be used properly and correctly. It sounds funny hearing my voice speak Italian. It's <laughs> Funny, it sounds funny hearing my voice speak German. It sounds funny hearing my voice in Korean. But I think the way that I did this is a real good way to communicate to all of the fans that speak those languages. Because I have a lot of fans that speak languages that I don't. So this helps me communicate with them better and more. Right, AI has definitely been used in the past, especially recently, it has been used for a lot of controversial topics. And honestly, it's like, it's crazy how you guys have been able to use AI in a positive way and shine, shine light on being able to expand and to grow the music industry in many ways. And translating into 27 different languages, your song, yeah. that's able to bridge so many language gaps and language barriers there too. That's right. So that's really cool. And recently I've been seeing a lot of crazy videos of AI, like Barack Obama singing Munch by Ice Spice, like, come on. But yeah. it's really nice to finally get a fresh breath of air and uh, hear something being positively used when it that's comes right. to artificial that, intelligence. That's right, Jazz. That's right. I mean, you know, it's funny hearing the late Dean Martin, who everybody loves, you know what I'm saying? Doing my record, Rebel Without a Pause, in his voice. Wow. I mean, who does that? Right. AI. Right. So I'm showing people how to really use it correctly, Jazz. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully that they'll follow my footsteps and use it correctly. You know, right now, um, with this AI thing, man, you know, they're doing a lot of bad stuff with it, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And putting out false images of people. You know what I'm saying? And the whole not, and it's not good. So hopefully that they'll follow my footsteps on doing it right. I think they will. What advice do you wish you could have given your younger self? And how do you feel that advice can help others? The advice that I wish I would have gave myself when I was young was, and you know, People told me not to do it, but yet I still had a hard head. I knew it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? But the, the advice that I should have gave myself was to listen to those people about not doing drugs. The reason why I say that, Jazz, is because, you know, drugs is a bad thing. You know, it's not a good thing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, as a teenager... I experimented with it, and that's one of the worst experiments that I ever could have made in my life. One of the worst mistakes I ever could have made in my life was experimenting with drugs. And it took me, it took me down a dark tunnel, you know what I'm saying? But as I was going down this dark tunnel, I'm learning stuff. So one day I decided this ain't for me. So I turned around and I started coming back out of that tunnel. Now finally, I'm out of the tunnel. So all of the stuff that I learned can't never be taken from me. And I think that God let me live through a lot of that because I became a mouthpiece to the world and I can influence a lot of people from doing bad to good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that I did learn what I learned because if I didn't learn it, then I wouldn't be able to teach about it. That was my advice, you know, to never mess with drugs, you know, never follow your friends doing bad things. So I'm saying that to you, Jazz, too, because you're young and you're going to grow up with friends doing all different kinds of things. Just because they're doing it, that don't mean you have to do it.
Right. You know what I'm saying? And if they're doing something bad and you don't get down with it and they're going to try to put you down and call you a lame, call you a sucker, or oh, you're a scaredy cat and all of that, hey, let those words bounce right off of you and let them keep doing the bad stuff. You keep doing the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because God will bless you even more and better. You know, if you keep yourself away from all of the bad stuff like that. Well, thank you for that advice. And I feel like that's very important to learn. Yeah. Um, no matter the age range, it's important to learn what to do and what not to do. Listening to those who are trying to give you good advice and to those who are trying to tell you what is the wrong way of living life and, and what is something that you shouldn't be doing. And I'm glad that you really learned from that mistake yeah. and that you move forward and that you're able to actually influence a lot of other people who are either going through the same struggles or who want to learn about those kinds of topics. You yeah. can teach them, hey, this isn't the right path to go. That's right. The best path is following your dreams and working That's right, hard Jazz. and going towards your goals. That's right, Jazz. And you know what? Another piece of advice that I really should have took that I didn't take was to be your own leader and not be a follower. And when I was in school, you know what I'm saying? I was always a follower. I mean, I did lead some, but I was mostly a follower. You know what I'm saying? And I went down that wrong path to where I never, ever got my diploma. So I'm working on a TV show right now. It's going to be called Flavor Flav goes back to high school. I'm going to go back to high school and get my diploma because I really, really want my diploma, Jazz. So my advice is this. While you're in school, and, and this is my advice that I'm even telling you, Jazz, okay? While you're in school, do the right things and get your diploma while you can. While you're in school, check this out, Jazz. If you want your life to come out right, you got to pick the right friends. If you pick the wrong friends, then your life ain't, it's going to come out wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? So my advice to you is while you're in school, when you got the chance, Jazz, get your diploma, girl, because without that diploma, you're going to have a hard way through life. And I, I didn't have it easy. My thing is don't wait until you're old like me to go back to get it because you might not make it to this age to go back to get it. So my advice is get it while you why you got the chance, Jazz. Well, thank that's you. That's my advice that. to you. And the rest of everybody else out there that's checking this out. Well, yeah, thank you so much for that advice. And school is very important to me. So I definitely will make sure to get all my diplomas. Yes, definitely, man. Get all your education, girl. Go as far as you could go. Thank you. And be the best that you could be. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? Check this out. We all make mistakes in life. Right. You know, because nobody's perfect. Mistakes were made to make over and over and over until you learn how not to make them anymore, until you learn how to get them right. Don't be afraid to fail, okay? Okay. <laughs> because not being afraid to fail helps you succeed a whole lot better, Jazz. To everybody that's watching this show, yo, G, I advise y'all, Stay tuned to this girl right here, all right? Because I'm dead serious, G. She is going to be the next takeover. This girl get ready to take over, G. This girl ain't no joke, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, check this out, G. All of us is in Jazzy's world, you know what I'm saying? This is your world, girl. Your world. Jazzy's world. Yeah, boy. Flavor, flavor.